Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and after I created the review video of the Shelly i3 I realized that the way I use the Shelly i3 to control other Shelly devices using simple URLs I should be able to use the Shelly to also control NetIO devices because they also support URL API and if you have seen my review video of the NetIO well actually either the power DIN or the power cable or well for that matter any uh, NetIO product you know that they support uh, URL API but I usually glanced over that because I wanted to talk about MQTT so today we are going to review the URL API and that will teach us how you can use the Shelly to control an NetIO device so as you can see I'm using this switch to control one of the outputs I'm also using another switch to control another output and the third switch to control the third output over there and before we go ahead and look at the actual integration I just wanted to show you what I have done on the part inside in the admin in the configuration page later in the video I'm going to refer to this unit using the IP address so I think it is a good idea that you check your network configuration and because um, I have configured my devices as DHCP I'm just going to refer to the DHCP address but I think it would be much safer if you would specify a static IP address for this device if you want to use this in URLs because obviously you want to make sure that those IP addresses don't change but for this demonstration I'm just going to leave it on the HCP the next thing we need to do is to go to this M2M API protocols and now because we are going to use the URL API you just have to enable that so you have a couple of options that you can choose from you can specify the port I just left it on port 80 and you can enable read and write which we definitely want to do because we actually want to control the outputs and you can also specify a password so that password need to be included in the URL and if you go into the product website you can also download documentation about the URL API and actually the only thing we are really interested in is this example so as you can see the way we are going to control the device is we are going to call a URL which is HTTP colon slash slash the IP of the device I've just talked about the IP and it's going to be slash net io dot CGI question mark pass equals the passphrase so this passphrase that you specify here and then and percent output X so we are using a power DIN so we have four outputs so this X can be one two three or four so it's not indexed from zero it's actually indexed from one and then the action is again a number and you probably remember this number if you have seen my other review because this is the sort of the numbers that we are also using in other protocols as well so zero means that the output turns off one that the output turns on two is a short off so it's on and then it turns off and it goes back on so let's say if you want to reset a device that would be the action that you want to use and then the three is the opposite so it's a short on it goes on and then turns off and four is a toggle so this would be an example of how we are going to use it but you are going to see this in the actual configuration what I put into the Shelly administration page so so that would be all about the configuration of the pardon we can look at how this integration works in real life so let's look at a couple of cases how I did that the first example let me turn this one off so the first example is that I have a regular toggle switch so this one this is connected to the input one of the Shelly i3 by the way I'm using Shelly i3 because we are using the NetIO powered in to control the output Shelly i3 is the ideal device for that because that only has inputs and doesn't have any outputs we are which we are not going to use anyway because we are using the powered in for that you can implement the same process using any other Shelly device for example the 1 p.m. or the 2.5 but then you know if you are want to control something with a NetIO then you are not going to be using the relay which is built into the Shelly so I think i3 is ideal for that and in the first example I'm using the input one which is this one it's configured as a toggle switch and if I turn it on one of the output on the power DIN turns on and if I turn it off then that output turns off so let's see how I did that so if I go into the settings first of all I configured the button type as a toggle switch and next if I go into the URL actions we have two URLs that we need to configure what should happen if the button switched on and as you can see I have enabled that URL and I have specified a URL which is going to call the powered in and going to 
actuate the first output. And as you can see, the URL is fairly simple, the IP of the NetIO device, slash netio.cgi, question mark, pass equals the password that we have specified on the admin page, and then n% percent output 1 equals 1. So the first output is output 1, the second one is output 2, output 3 and output 4. Of course, if you are using another NetIO device which doesn't have four outputs, obviously you would just only use either output 1 or output 1 and 2. And equals 1 means that it turns on. Again, we have seen in the documentation 0 is off, 1 is on, 3 is going to be the momentary on, 4 sorry, two is, going to be, 2 is going to be momentary off, which we are not going to use, but you can use that. 3 is going to be momentary on, and 4 is going to be toggle. So this URL is going to turn on output 1. And I've also configured something for the off URL, and it is the same. The only difference is, at the end, it says output equals 0. And don't forget that you need to enable the URL, and you need to also save it. So, simple, and it works. And again, it would be ideal if you have this set up, you know, way apart from each other. And for example, you don't have a means to, you know, physically wire this switch to the NetIO. So you have to use basically the internet in order to, you know, transfer this uh, switch action to the actuator device. In the next example, I'm using the output 2. And this output 2 is configured as a momentary switch. Well, I happen to have a toggle switch here, so I'm just going to do this uh, to simulate how a momentary switch would look like, or how a momentary switch would work. And I've configured this that whenever I press on this switch, it's just going to toggle the output. So again, you, with one single action, you can either turn the output on or turn the output off. And for that, I have gone into the configuration, into the settings, and the button type is set to momentary. And then in the URL, I have configured this simple URL, which is the short press URL. And as you can see, it is enabled. The URL is very much similar to what we have seen before. So the IP slash netio.cg, question mark pass equals password, and question mark output two, which is the second output, equals four. So four is a toggle action. And it turns on, and it turns off. So it works. And I thought maybe I'm going to configure another one as well. So I've uh, configured a long press as well. And as you can see, it's going to turn the output to off. So if you're not sure whether your device is on and off by just you know, doing a short click, you can do a long click and that would definitely turn off the output. Hmm. So at least you have used two different actions. And finally, for the third button, I've also configured as a momentary button, and that turns the fourth out, sorry, the third output on. The third output actually wired to the fourth lamp, but that's still the third output. And as you can see, it turns the output on, and then the output automatically turns on. So we are using the built-in momentary on or auto off feature of the powered in. And the way I've configured this, I'm go into the settings again. The button type is set to momentary. And in the URL action, on the short press, I've configured the URL, which says at the end, at output 3 equals 3. So 3 is the momentary on action. So if I just do that, it turns on. And I'm just using the default off time, which is, I think, 2,200 milliseconds. So it's slightly over 2 seconds. And after that, it automatically turns off. And I thought... Just like before, I'm going to use another action as well. I could have used the two short presses, but I used the long press again. And I wanted that to turn off outputs. So what I have done here is, so what I have done here is for a long press, I've enabled the URL. And if I look at the URLs, I just use the add button to add the second URL. And as you can see, this URL is going to turn off output one, and then it's going to turn off output two as well. So if I long press on this one, the two outputs turn off. So again, you can use the second action to actuate or to instruct multiple outputs of the powered in to do something, in this case, turn them off. And that was my short cap, how you can use the Shelly, in this particular case, the Shelly i3, to control a NetIO device, the powered in, in this case, using the URL APIs. If you are interested in any of these two devices, you're going to find the links in the video description, and also I'm going to leave links 
in the actual review videos of these two units if you are interested in them in more details. But that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.